Hey guys, welcome to 10 Minute English with May. And today we're going to look at our third dependent clause, which is our adverbial clause. So we've already discussed the first type of dependent clause, which is an adjective clause, right? And it starts with a relative pronoun, who, whom, who switched that, or a relative adverb. And the function is an adjective, so it modifies a noun or pronoun called the antecedent. And of course, we have also discussed a second type of dependent clause, which is a noun clause. There are three types of noun clauses, the that clause, the if or whether clause, and the question noun clause that starts with WH words or how. And like a noun or a gerund phrase, a noun clause mostly functions as subject or object of the sentence. And of course, sometimes it can be used as adjective complement after emotion adjectives, like I'm happy that you passed the test, or it can be used as an appositive after certain nouns like belief, thought, theory, so on and so forth. Okay, and today we are looking at adverbial clause. So like an adverb, an adverbial clause modifies the verb. And there are many different kinds of adverbial clauses. And today we are going to be looking at the ones that talk about time. So, as you can see here, there are many different subordinators. So if you remember from our part of speech lesson, we talked about two types of conjunction coordinators like fanboys and subordinators like when, whenever, while, as soon as, so on, so forth. Keep in mind that a subordinating conjunction makes a clause dependent, meaning that when you have a subordinator here, you don't have a complete sentence, you have a dependent clause. In this case, you have adverbial clause, right? So we break down the first sentence. When people had to hunt for food, they moved from place to place, right? And before our subject people, we have our subordinator. So that is why the first part of the sentence, that is our adverbial clause, and why is there a comma here? Whenever our dependent clause comes before, our adverbial clause comes before, or maybe you have a phrase, or maybe you have a transition word, a conjunctive adverb, you need something called the introducer comma, followed by your actual sentence, your independent clause. Okay, and as a quick recap, we can have phrases inside clauses. So you can see in our adverbial clause, we have to hunt for food, right? To hunt is our infinitive and for food is prepositional phrase. So same thing with our independent clause, from place to place, that's our prepositional phrases. All right, and now let's look at the second example. Whenever. Whenever food became scarce in one area, they moved to another area. So this is the same thing. You have your subordinating conjunction. So even if you have subject food and became verb, this is a dependent clause. So of course you need your introducer comma, and then you have your independent clause. They move to another area. Okay, and the third while. So keep in mind that while in this case is talking about happening at the same time, but while can also be used as a contrast word. So when you are using it as a contrast word, it comes with a comma in front of while. Okay, so for example, I can say, um, 
summers in Taiwan are hot, comma, while summers in Canada are cool, right? But in this case, this is talking about time. The men hunted game while our subordinating conjunction. The women gather plants. So unlike our first two examples, our dependent clause comes after our independent clause, the men hunted game. And you can see there is no comma here. So a general rule of punctuation for adverbial clause is if you have dependent, which is D, you need introducer comma followed by independent. Whereas if you have your independent clause first, you don't need the comma. So you can have your dependent clause right after. Okay, and number four, as soon as eating habits changed, and that is our independent clause. Pardon me, it should be habits changed. And then we have our subordinator as soon as. So again, we have independent clause first and dependent clause after. So that is why there is no comma. All right. And then after. So we're going back to having our dependent clause before our independent clause, right? After is our subordinator, people learned. So do you see how there is an introducer comma here? Keep in mind that a word can function as different parts of speech. So in this case, the after is followed by subject verb. And that's why it is a subordinator. So remember, subordinator is followed by a clause by subject verb. So let's compare it with this example. After work, I go to the gym. Do you see how in this example, the after is no longer a subordinator? Instead, it is a preposition because it is followed by a noun instead of a clause, and that would be our prepositional phrase. Okay, and since, in this case, it means from a certain point in time, from that time, so since the United States changed from an agricultural to an industrial society, eating habits there have changed. So again, we have our dependent clause first, right? So that is why this is D, introducer, comma, I, our independent clause. And remember that since can also mean cause and effect. So it can mean because as well. So for example, I can say since Bob didn't study, introducer, comma, he failed the test. Right, so since has two different meanings. And as in this case means at the same time, right? People in the United States started eating more processed convenience food as their lives became busier. So no comma here because this is independent and then dependent, right? So as is our subordinator. And also like after, our as can be a preposition as well, right? As a teacher, I am supposed to impart wisdom, right? So in this case, the as would be preposition because it is not followed by a clause, it is followed by a noun only, okay? And before, before people in the United States, so again, subordinator in front, so dependent clause, introducer comma, independent clause, and before can also be a preposition, right? You can say before work, I go to the gym, which is the same example. Okay. And last but not least, until subordinator, women had time to cook meals from scratch until subordinator, they went to work in factories and offices, right? So until comes in the middle of the sentence. So that's why there's no comma because it's I, D, independent, and then dependent, okay? 
And that is it for our time subordinators. There might be more, right? This is not a um an exclusive or comprehensive list. Okay. But that's it for our time adverbial clause. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.